It was an egg drop of epic proportions. Thousands flocked to Beloit Central Christian Church for a massive egg hunt. It had all the works, the plastic eggs filled with candy and toys, the Easter bunny, and of course, a helicopter. We are here inside the FBB shop. I'm with Aramis Clark, the CEO of the shop. You sold out your church within an hour and a half. What does it mean to have the community support you guys like this? It means a lot. You know, coming from where we're coming from, there's not a lot of support around here. So for the community to come together for something like this, it means the world to us. And when are you guys going to restock this championship shirts? We've been getting questions when we was outside earlier. When are you guys going to restock? I'm trying to put it together now. So hopefully by the end of next week, we'll have a full restock on everything. I know you told me earlier that you talked to Fred on the phone today. What did he have to say? Uh, he was just amazed by how many people came out, especially all three, all five, six watch parties we had. You know. And then just real quick, he just talked to us for a minute on stage, talked to the audience. What did you say? I talked to him about how Juneteenth is every day, how we are stronger than, than we think we are, the strength that we think we have. This morning we have a special guest joining us today, Ashley Armelin. Just dropped her debut album, As I Please. And she's here because she's currently on tour, singing across the country, and she's also a hometown favorite. Good morning. Good morning. So can you tell us more about your roots here in Rockford? Um, so I moved here actually to Rockford when I was about 15, and I just started singing, and I got discovered on YouTube by a producer, and then I just kind of took off from there, and then I actually recently just signed to Sony Orchard for a distribution deal. Congratulations. Thank you. So um, yeah, it's been great. Rockford has been very supportive of me. When did you first pick up a microphone? Probably around five years old, I would say. Did you always know? Like, yeah. I'm going to sing. There's no plan B. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you're currently on tour. Where are some places you've sung at, and how has the audience changed as you go to different locations? Um, I mean, I've performed all over the country, but I would have to say because I'm, you know, being from Rockford, performing at the Coronado was something definitely that was great for me. Like, Day talking with shoppers in Rockford, many did not even know about the proposed tax on plastic bags. And from the people I spoke with, there was definitely an overall consensus and opinion on if they would pay the additional five cent increase. No, I wouldn't. Sorry, but no. Um, I would probably bring my own bags to the store. I wouldn't want to have to pay extra. It serves no purpose to pay five cent for a plastic bag. We already paying high taxes here anyway. So why add more to us? No, I would not pay that because I feel that that's a part of my purchase. I've already paid for this. Governor J.B. Prisker's state budget for fiscal year 2020 includes a tax on plastic bags. One shopper tells me she wouldn't mind the added money if it meant better methods of recycling them. I would pay a bag tax fee if it would mean that we could either recycle more of these bags, have some way to be able to get rid of them. The governor says the added five cent tax is one way to reduce the risk to wildlife. And it could bring in an average of $20 million for the state, which will go towards its $15 billion debt. Real fiscal stability requires a long-term commitment to paying down debt. According to the Center for Biological Diversity, 100 billion plastic bags are used each year in the U.S. and only for about 12 minutes. And most aren't even getting recycled. Right now they're just going to landfill and it really is a sad situation. So maybe he's trying to help the environment a little with that. It takes 500 years for your typical plastic bag to degrade. But even then, these bags just become smaller and smaller pieces of plastic that the earth absorbs as toxins. However, don't worry right now, the plastic bag tax is still a proposal and will need to get approval by both the Illinois House and the Senate. Eyewitness News will keep you updated on this once lawmakers return to Springfield. While it may not look like it, gas prices are actually at the lowest that they've been in the last few years, which is why some experts say now is the time to increase that gas tax. But drivers I spoke with say they do not want to keep spending more money at the pump. I'm not happy about that. It's, you know, it costs enough already and it's already gone up enough. <laughs> That's terrible. I mean, I have a long drive to work every day. Well, I still have to drive, so I don't think my driving habits will change. Illinois lawmakers are looking to raise the tax on gas from 19 cents per gallon to 38 cents per gallon. They say it would bring in about $2 billion a year to make repairs to roads and bridges. A local economist says now would be the time to do it. When gas prices are lower, it's probably one of the best times. So we've had historically low prices for a couple of years now, and um, it's definitely a, you know easier time 
to do that right now than at other times. But Dr. Roxana Edu says the extra money will put many drivers in a financial strain. We in economics consider gasoline an inelastic good. So uh, that means that when prices rise and a tax increase like this would increase prices, um, they would place a larger burden on the buyers. Buyers would not have the ability to substitute. The tax on gas in Illinois has not increased since 1990. This bill, however, still needs to get approval from a small Senate committee before the full Senate takes a vote on it and then sends it over to the House. Reporting in Rockford, I'm Brett Brooks. Back to you at the desk. From brunches to paint and sips, families are out and about in Rockford to celebrate and show appreciation to the mothers in their lives. A Mother's Day is something very special around us, um, especially in Italian culture. Mother is, uh, is the center of our lives. And so one day a year, um, we pull out all stops. What better place to take mom than out to eat to celebrate? And restaurants are making sure moms do not step foot in the kitchen and are ready to treat them on their special day. So we have a special prime rib dinner that we usually only cook for special banquets. Um, but for today, we do something very special. We cook our prime rib. Um, it's a, it takes us about eight hours to cook. We get here very early in the morning. Uh, we open early. It's the only day of the year we open early. Um, but then we decorate the whole restaurant full of uh, nice flowers and, and really take care of the moms uh, that support all of our families here in the, in the community. A little bit farther down on East State, mothers are cherishing every minute they have with their loved ones. Uh, Mother's Day is special to me because I had some infertility issues, so my daughter is a wonderful blessing, and it's just a great way to spend time with family. And for the artistic mothers, downtown at 317 Market, a mother-daughter paint and sip session is underway. All three generations attending with the youngest leading the class. It's a chance for me to be able to share my gifts and everything that I have and work for and like have fun with it for Mother's Day, you know, like my mom's my best friend, so it's cool to be able to have fun with uh, doing events like this in, in my comfort of my own space. I'm blessed to say that I have both my mother and my grandmother here. A lot of people can't say that and I definitely can't I can't take my mother for granted because she does so much for me you know and she likes like I said my mom's my best friend so it's cool to be able to enjoy uh -huh. mm, so, <laughs> <laughs> so what is one gift all moms want on this day visit them often and just be with them that's what I ask of my kids so as you just heard, just spend time with your mother while she's still here to show her that she's appreciated and that she is celebrated. And a special happy Mother's Day to my mother, Gugu. I love you. Back to you at the desk, Brittany. Everyone's pulling out all the stops to celebrate Rockford's inaugural Pride Month. After a riot at Stonewall Inn in New York 50 years ago kicked off the LGBTQ civil rights movement, those protests turned to celebrations over the years. And for the first time ever, those celebrations are coming here. Saturday kicks off the 50th anniversary of Pride, and for the first time, the city of Rockford will be rainbow colored, as it has officially proclaimed June as LGBTQ Pride Month. So we thought now's the time. It's been far too long uh, that we have not designated uh, June to be Pride Month. Uh, obviously, 50 years after the riots, uh, now's the time to do it. Celebrations to commemorate this first year will be seen throughout the city. Even local businesses are pitching in. All right, well, here at Fleet Feet to celebrate Pride Month, we have our wonderful Pride sunglasses, and we're always happy to support everyone in our community. Grab yourself a pair of these flashy sunglasses available at Fleet Feet Sports, or you could try out this colorful drink from Prairie Street Brewing Company. So we're going to do a rainbow drink using different flavors of absolute vodka. And if you look what's going on across the world right now, there's a lot of persecutions going on in that culture that just it shouldn't be happening. So this is just a chance to show that even the smallest of communities are backing everybody in, uh, in the states. It tastes like bougie. And Beefaroo is baking cakes all month long. So for the month of June for Pride, Beefaroo is going to be providing rainbow cake and it's going to be $4.99 a slice. Proceeds from each slice of cake will go to PFLAG, an organization dedicated to LGBTQ rights 